Um, I have worked up a sample of your crossbow taser. Here it is from the side, there it is from the front. Um, I've gone and done uh, effectively a compound bow or a pair of compound bows. Let me explain what you're looking at there. This is Adam Savage in my cave. Uh, and today's show and tell is a prop I built about six years ago for the production of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, one of my all time favorite books. Um, and production of Dirk Gently called me up and asked me if I would be willing to design a hero prop for their production, uh, specifically a crossbow taser as it was written in the script. Uh, and okay, let me get to the beginning. <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to build a hero prop. Having built hero props for shows, I know that it's not as simple as making an object and just mailing it to them. Um, productions have all sorts of shifting needs and changing priorities. Uh, scripts can change at a moment's notice. And so to build a hero prop is taking on a responsibility, not just to build an object, but to build a relationship with the company in which you are servicing all of those potential myriad changes. And I explained to them that I was, you know, I didn't have the time to build a hero prop. Also, Building a hero prop usually means building three to six of something. There's usually a, a hero version, there's a stunt version, there's background versions, there's all sorts of different uh, 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 modes of detail depending on where that prop is seen. And again, uh, I did not have the time to go to Vancouver and support these props. So what I said to them was, I love the idea of this object, let me design it. I will design it in three dimensions because I don't draw very well. Uh, I'll build it out of foam core. I'll put call outs on the foam core about what materials I think it could be made out of. And I'll send that to you and you can have your art department build it. And they said, great. And so I designed this uh, loosely based on a compound bow mixed with a blunderbuss. Um, I will tell you, if you want to look at antique firearms that will blow your freaking mind, the Victoria and Albert Museum in Kensington in London, which is on Museum Row or the MNH, the Museum of Natural History, and all sorts of other incredible buildings are. The Victoria and Albert, the VNA, as it's called, is one of the great museums of the world. And you got to go look at their wheel lock pistol displays because basically, if you've seen steampunk guns, no steampunk gun you've ever seen is as weird as what was actually being made in the 16th, 17th centuries. Uh, and I took a lot of inspiration from that kind of thing for this. I also had purchased uh, a modern bow for a gig, uh, a modern uh, compound bow. And I really liked the way that you could play around with circular arcs. That was kind of my guiding principle on this, is that it is a set of circular arcs of different sizes in relation to each other. Um, and this is the foam core mock-up that I sent. But before I sent it, I recorded the video that you saw at the very top of this video. And I just wanted, you know, you could do this in a phone call, you could do it in a letter, but it's so much faster to communicate with videos. And here you can see I'm saying, oh, I think there should be some brass screws here, some checkering on the handle. I think this is like lots of hardwood, lots of brass, nice polished brass blunderbuss back end here, some chrome bits, some old wire, old black crackle finish meter, that kind of thing. I thought through a crossbow taser and I thought, well, you need two aberrations from the crossbow taser. You need to shoot someone with the dart that will carry the electricity and then you need to generate the electricity. And if this is like a old timey weapon, I thought, well, if you had two strings in the compound bow, one could be used for shooting the arrow and the second under a huge amount of tension could be used for pulling on a generator. Like that amount of force, you could apply it to a gearbox and a generator and use that to generate electricity. So the idea is that it would have two triggers, one for the dart, one to generate the electricity and yeah, electrocute the person at the other end. I'm literally ripping off like a camera rig here with that handle. That is absolutely like tons of cameras. Specifically, I think the camera I was inspired by is an Aton 16 millimeter. They have beautiful wooden grips, those Atons. Lovely pieces of equipment. Enough uh, showing you that model. Let's show you what I got back from, oh, also wait, I wanna say, <laughs> I did this job for free. I did this job for free kind of because I wanted to maintain a lot of the control to myself, um, but also because the deal was, I'll make this design, I'll send it to you, you can do whatever you want with it. 
I'm not going to be precious about it as long as the only price is I want the hero prop back from production when you're all done shooting it. So at the end of the second season, they sent me this. And this is what they built from my prop design. And it is just a lesson in how much things change and how much they remain the same. I think it is an example, a clear example of how excellent the art department on Dirk Gently was uh, because they've done some magnificent things and wherever they made a change, they definitely made it better. This is a lovely device. You will notice that the first thing they did was they didn't make it upright. They made it horizontal. Now, that was a weird call on my part. I was trying to be different. I was trying to make something that looked different. And again, I'm not precious about this. I know that when you get into production, you have all sorts of priorities that are radically different than you could have ever surmised at the beginning of production. So I knew that there were going to be shifts and changes. But yeah, this thing has, it has some electronics down here. It's got a, uh, a fishing winder. It's got most of the same components in slightly different arrangements. Uh, and I'm not sure what they were thinking about. I, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know why there's an air cylinder here, but again, I love it. Uh, they've gone with the dark wood. They went with the checkering. I mean, because this matches my drawing, I know they didn't find this. They just actually built this and then CNC'd the checkering onto it. And that's nice work. I always liked the big circular blunderbuss trigger guard. Um, and There's still power in this thing. That's a working battery. I had no idea. This is literally, I haven't touched this thing in six years. And I'm still getting, yeah. I don't, I wonder if a light went on. I don't see any lights in this thing. I also, they also welded this steel box. I mean, obviously this was the hero. And that's because all the major parts are metal. Uh, or pla uh, or heavy and actual wood. I'll bet there were some stunt versions of this because this is a lot. I'm having trouble holding this up for the length of this video. I'm pretty sure that the actors would get a little salty if they had to hold this and run around with this all day. So I'll bet that there were some uh, lighter weight versions, shall we say. Oh, right. Yeah. So they used a crossbow base here, right? And then they CNC'd the aluminum. Uh, compound bow frames. They, it looks like they actually used some actual uh, compound bow parts out here, which I recommended to them to do because making those cams would be a pain in the butt. Um, then they've done some beautiful brass etching on these brass fascia parts, both here and here, for that extra little bit of steampunk flavoring. It is a gorgeous prop. And there's a way in which my deal that I made on this, uh, which is to design it for free, as long as I get the hero prop down at the end of production. And by the way, I did the same thing for Year of the Rabbit with Matt Berry. I made the truncheon for his show on the BBC and uh, I, you know, Matt and will send me that truncheon when they're all done shooting that show. I love this arrangement. Um, one, it gives me a lot of freedom with the production. Two, it feels like the right kind of trade. Three though, is that it's, it, it harkens right back to the very beginning of my career when I also was building props for free. But that was because theater companies I was working for often had no money, like a budget for props of like $70. And in those cases, I frequently took jobs just to build my skill base, but also to build my material uh, library. So what I would do is I would say to someone, oh, I'll build a, some swords for your Shakespearean play for you for 15 bucks a piece, uh, and that's just covering materials. So you don't cover my labor, but you cover materials. And then I get to go to the hardware store and purchase a bunch of wood. The thing is, in the beginning of anybody's career, in the beginning of my career, my biggest expense was different than it is now. My biggest expense now in getting stuff done is labor. It's paying people is expensive and that adds up really, really quickly. But at the beginning of your career, your labor is worth nothing. It is your, literally your cheapest asset. The heavy asset cost back in the beginning was materials. I couldn't go to the hardware store and spend $100 on a tool. I had to wait for a job that could afford me to buy a nice sewing machine. Uh, I did a lot of that kind of purchasing. So uh, building stuff for free 
in order to build my material base feels just like a little bit of a hop, skip and a jump from building something for free and getting the hero prop back at the end of production. Um, sorry, because that was always the second part of the deal for theaters. I want all these props back when I'm done. There's a way in which when I build something I know is going into my collection, there's just a little more love in the build. Frankly, there's just a little more. I can't deny it. I wish it was otherwise. And I am a professional. You wouldn't notice the difference, but I notice the difference. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Dirk Gently, you guys were awesome for sending this back to me. It is a prized and lovely piece of my collection. It hangs from the ceiling of my cave next to Chewie's crossbow. Uh, I expect to receive another crossbow soon from a friend. Uh, we'll cover that as a one day build and then we'll probably have to figure out a whole crossbow display. Thank you guys for joining me for this trip down memory lane and uh, I will see you next. Something fell off. I'm going to go find that. See you guys next time. <laughs> um, I have worked up a sample of your crossbow taser. Here it is from the side. Here it is from the other side. There it is from the front. Oh yeah. Okay, so let me explain the parts of this here. Um, I've gone and done uh, effectively a compound bow or a pair of compound bows, uh, like a modern compound bow. Um, but I've made them smaller and handheld. I've gone with a handle that's kind of like a blunderbuss and uh, circular arcs are a recurring theme throughout this, including the circular trigger pull. In here would be two triggers, one front, one back. The front one fires the bolt here and that releases this crossbow, the right hand side one, shoot, it goes into the person. This spool here is the wire that gets into the person. Then the second spool on this side, this is a generator with some gears, right? Steampunk gears, those are good. Um, and on the back here is a meter so that once the thing goes into the person, you pull the second trigger and that activates this bow, which starts to pull on a string inside this, uh, the, the, the generator. You know, it's like pulling a, a generator, you know, like the old flashlights used to squeeze. And that sends electricity through this spool and the meter tells you how much juice they're getting. Um, I just want to get a picture from you guys if this is the right track. If you like this, um, I can start working up some color ideas and you know how this thing, I think this is like lots of hardwood, lots of brass, nice polish brass blunderbuss back end here, some chrome bits, some old wire, old black crackle finish meter, that kind of thing. But first I want to know how you like this design, size, layout, and everything. I recognize it's a little bigger than handheld, but I also think it's kind of, I think it looks awesome. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing what you think.